Hello everybody and welcome to Programming with Ruby, episode 10, Objects and Modules. I am Tyler and this video is brought to you by manwithcode.com. In this episode, I will be telling you what variable scope is, what you need to know about when you develop more advanced applications. Be going more in depth about class creation, even though I covered it before. I'll be telling you what open classes are and when they're useful and how not to completely mess yourself up when you're using them. I'll be telling you how to use class inheritance. I'll be teaching you about modules. Again, something you need to know about when you develop more advanced applications. Alright, so let's get started with variable scope. So variable scope is the part of the application in which variables are usable and new scopes are introduced when you create uh, classes and modules which means that if we have a variable like this which is a local variable which you will learn about the difference between all the different types of variables in a second and we create a variable inside a class and I know that's not the right way to create classes but it's an example uh, these are two separate variables same thing if you define a method that variable as well is a completely different variable than all the other two. Alright, so local variables are only available where they are defined. Alright, so we have that and they just look like that. Instance variables are available across the whole instance of a class and they look like that. They are the variable name prefixed with an at sign. When I say the entire instance of a class, let's say we have a class and I'm gonna call it my class and we have an uh, instance variable that is available anywhere in any instance of the class and new instances are created with the dot new method and each of those instances have completely different instance variables so they're completely separate they're not the same at all or yeah now class variables on the other hand are the same across all classes so across all the instances it's the same variable, same value, whatever. Um, global variables, which are prefixed with the dollar sign, are available throughout the entire application, no matter where you are. And constants, which are all uppercase, are available throughout the entire application and are only changeable within the scope they are defined. All right, now on to class creation. You learned a little while ago that you create classes with the class keyword followed by the name of the class. And don't forget, the name of the class must start with a capital letter. And you instantiate the class with the dot new method. Very good. And you can also define methods inside that class with the def keyword, which is short for define, and that is followed by the name of the method. And that's just going to do print screen hello all right and you would run that with uh, variable dot hello quite simple quite easy now let's say you need some code that is run as soon as the class is created or instantiated so you know it whatever you need done at the beginning is available throughout the whole application and that can be useful for different things. Maybe you're manipulating a database. The first thing you would need to do would be to connect to that database. Or maybe you're making a game. The first thing you would need to do would be to create the game screen. So yeah. So using the variable example before, we would have an instance variable named database. And that would connect to the database. All right, and that's just a fake method. I don't know how you would go about doing it because it could be different in all the different situations. So Now, let's say you need something available um, outside of the, of the class of the class instances. You know, maybe you have an enemy class for a game and you need to know how many enemies there are. Well, you would do something like that with the self dot and then that would be followed by the name of the method so number of enemies and however that would do that I don't know because again it would be different for each type of game 
And we could just have my class, which would be an enemy in this example, and call a number of enemies. All right. And that can also be useful in other situations, but that's just one example. I am sure you can come up with more. All right. On to open classes. You've learned how to create classes, and now the most, probably the next step, very important, would be to learn about open classes and what they are. Now, what it means is you have the ability to add and replace code in classes. Now, it's a lot easier to show you than uh, tell you. So basically, we've defined this class called my class. And let's say it's defined in somewhere else. You know, it's not our code. But we need to, no. Actually, it is our code, but it's defined somewhere else. And as in a certain program, we need to add to it or maybe replace some functionality so it works slightly differently. Well, what you do is you just redefine it with the class keyword, and you put your new code in here. Um, now, you don't have to redefine the whole class, just what you're adding or replacing. So let's say I wanted the hello method to, I don't know, what do I want it to do? Maybe this is a a database application and we want it to just put hello into the database so we'd put database dot I don't know add value to whatever place it is add value hello that's obviously not the most realistic example but it still gets the point across alright now a more concrete example would be for the class string and let me just get rid of this now, string has to do with all strings, which are defined between quotes. And each of these is an instance of the string class. Now, let's say I wanted to know, or wanted to get an array of all the words in a string. Well, I could define a method called words. So, def words that would take strings, the string as a parameter. And I would just do that string, and I would call the scan method with the regular expression. And hold on. I hope I've gotten that right. Okay. With that regular expression, and let me just test that out because I'm not 100% sure I did that right. We would print to the screen words hello world dot inspect so we see it the way would look in the code so and run ruby dot ample dot rb and there we go we got an array with each of the words in it very nice but that I find that kind of I don't know kind of clunky or something it's not the way I like it so. Wouldn't it be nicer just to be able to call hello world the string dot words and get all the words? Well, you can do that with open classes. Just redefine the string class and let's create a method called words with that same regular expression. Scan. Dun, dun, dun. And that should accomplish the same thing we wanted it to. And it looks a lot nicer and a lot more object oriented. Oops, I said scar, not scan. I apologize. There we go. Same thing, but it looks a lot nicer. And that's basically the use of open classes. But you have to be careful. If you redefine functionality and other parts of your code, um, depends on that functionality and you mess it up somehow you've just messed it up for your whole entire program and have created a definite problem which could happen if say I took the array class and redefined inspect I have no idea how exactly that works I'm sure I could figure it out but I'm likely to screw it up so yes next on to